What's happening, y'all? J.R. Raymond back again, coming to you from home, where we're going to talk about a couple of bowling balls. Actually, we're going to talk about a lot of bowling balls. Eh, not really a lot. I guess they don't have a ton in their line. But we're going to try to figure out which two bowling balls, if I had to choose two bowling balls only, from the Storm line. Storm only, not Roto Grip, not 900 Global. Storm alone. If I had to choose two bowling balls to keep and have in my bag at all times, which ones would they be? We're going to talk about that, and then we're going to try to figure out which one I would throw in the middle of the river. There's a few of them I got, I got in mind, so stay tuned. All right, folks, here we are. We've got the Storm website up. And we've got some of the new ones on here now, or the new one, the Infinite Physics, is on there. So we can take a look at everything that we have. From the Storm line, which is a uh, not not a huge line because they have three brands, so they kind of spread it out a little bit. So um, we're going to kind of take a peek at what we have. I was just trying to make sure you could see all of the bowling balls that are in the line here as we went down. But if I had to choose only two bowling balls, which two would I choose? Now the issue that I have is Storm is one of my favorite brands. Um, the people who claim that I have a bias usually say it's because of this or swag. They say I have a bias with swag. Uh, swag is just a newer company that I think I, you know, I like helping to build their brand because they are coming out with some good bowling balls. Um, some of them you'll notice I've said are not very good. Some of Storm bowling balls I will say are not very good, at least for me. Um, so that's uh, that's kind of where we're at. Um, I do have a few Storm bowling balls in my bag at all time. Um, the ones that I carry around all the time are the Nova and the Dark Code. That's really the, oh, and the IQ Tour. Uh, IQ Tour usually goes with me in most places. Um, the Dark Code gets the most use out of the rest of them. The Nova was one that, that generally I, I used a lot of when it first came out. And lately I just haven't really been able to use it much. I'm not really sure why, but I haven't. Uh, the gem has actually taken over that spot for the most part. The gem is also Roto Grip, so we can't talk about the gem here. We're talking about Storm. So, um, ones that I'm going to eliminate are anything in the phase line. I'm going to eliminate that proton physics. I'm not going to add that one in there either. Anything in the high road line are not ones that I would keep. If I had to choose, if I had to choose right now, Dark Code would be number one. Dark Code's in my bag no matter what. That is probably my favorite Storm Ball right now. When I'm able to use that ball, it is my daddy. It is the berries. It is the, the balls and biscuits. I'm telling you that right now. That ball is pretty, pretty good. Um, the Nova would have made that next spot, but because it's been replaced more or less, I'm... I'm going to go with the Infinite Physics because I like the way that it is a stronger version of an IQ Tour, essentially, for me. It's just a little bit stronger, but gives me a real similar look. And anybody that threw the original physics would have said the same thing. It was like a stronger IQ Tour. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, you know, you got the Phase 2. The Phase 2 was always labeled as the strong IQ Tour. That was one that never got along with me. I didn't get along with that ball. You know, same thing with like the phase three. The phase three tricked me. Phase three has that cover stock that just, it, it seemed to have died on me after just about 20 games, maybe even less. It looked so good out of box. It did so many cool things. I thought it was going to be that ball that just went crazy down lane for me when I needed it to. And I took it to some events and it just went straight. Um, I practiced with it with quite a bit, but dang, it just, it went straight. And the proton physics got me too. The proton physics... You know, I thought that strong cover would have been good, but it just puked and died so quick on me. I only used it in one event, and it only looked good for one game, and then all of a sudden it was nothing. I mean, I just I could never use it again anywhere. Maybe for me it was just that core cover combination didn't match up for me. I don't know, but I mean the phase two, phase two is one that I drilled. I think I drilled three of them because everybody kept saying how good it was. Everybody kept saying, oh, like, if you're a tournament bowler, you, you need some benchmark piece. This phase two is where it's at. I've seen so many people score so well with it. So many people make the lanes look easy with it. It is a great ball. A lot of people love it. For me, it sucked. I don't know why. I don't know why. Just certain bowling balls from certain brands, they just don't match up for me, and they're just awful for me. Um, phase two was one of them. The other one that was awful for me was the high road. 
the original high road or pretty much any of the high roads. I, I've, I've not gotten to look good in my hand. I drilled five high roads. You know, I watched Bo Gergen shoot 860 with a high road out at USBCs. I watch all, again, another one of those balls that so many people have bowled so many good scores with and use it in so many different areas, especially now on the burn type situations. Mine was just so over under. It either overreacted off the dry or never reacted at all. It was so bad for me. So um, the night road, I haven't seen yet. I have not thrown that one yet. I'm not sure if they're sending me that one. I hope they are, so that way I can attempt to give one of the road balls a, a good review. Because um, we had like the high road max, I, that one was another one that was a lot like the proton physics was real early and pukey for me. IQ Tour, one of my all time favorites. Now, the only reason I'm not keeping that one in my bag is because there's a lot of bowling balls on the market now that are very, very similar. So if the IQ Tour were to disappear, I think I could still live. If the dark code disappeared, I don't know that I could live. I think it would be pretty tough. So um, the IQ Tour is one that I could kind of take or leave, but it was one of my favorites. I made a lot of money at USBCs with that ball the one year, uh, bowled 300 at the Bowler's Journal, and... Uh, uh, and won doubles. I think we finished first and second. I think I finished first, second, and fourth in doubles that year. Um, and then that was the same year we set the USBC record for highest team game ever with 13-18. And that was the ball that I used was an IQ Tour. And it was funny, too. The funny story about that is I bowled one squad at the at the Bowler's Journal <clears throat> with the IQ Tour, the way I had it laid out. It was just pin up above the bridge, kicked out, nothing major. This thing was so over under for me that first block. I was so mad. I was about to throw it away. Um, and this is the first IQ tour I ever drilled. And then I just, I'm like, well, I don't have anything to lose. I took it into the storm booth and we put a, uh, uh, a high weight hole in it to get it to flare a little bit less to see if it would smooth it out. I took it back and went and bowled the very next bowler's journal and, uh, bowled like 790 with it with 300 in the middle. So it was, it gave me everything I wanted. And then I bowled like 2000 something in uh in all events for the team team thing and had i think 740 for team event where we had 34 or something or no i think we had 35 something 350 and we ended up being like seventh in team that was the year team scores were super 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 high but we bowled the highest team score ever with 13 18 game two i believe it was so i mean it was uh it was a good trip, and that ball, I owe a lot of it to that bowling ball, and putting that weight hole in that made a big difference. And that's always been my story to go to when people talk about weight holes and why that's such a significant thing, because you can change the core and change the dynamics of that ball quite a bit by putting a hole in it, which we did. So if there was one ball that I had to throw in the ocean, I think it's going to be a tie. I'm going to throw two balls in the ocean from Storm. I'm going to throw her in the, in the river. I'm going to take it over to the Clinton River down the road, and I'm going to take a phase two and throw it in there, and I'm going to throw a high road in there. Just because, and I know people are going to hate me for that because they love that ball. Man, I'm taking, at least a phase three gave me hope. Phase three gave me hope. Proton physics gave me hope. Phase two never gave me hope. Phase two always looked awful for me. And that high road always looked awful for me. I even drilled another one. I drilled another high road, newer one, newer edition one, this past year uh, at the new shop. And it still rolled bad for me. <laughs> I, couldn't, I just, I can't figure it out. So that's where I'm going with this. Those are the two balls I would pick. Dark Code, Infinite Physics, those are the two in my bag that are going to stay. Next, we're going to talk about Roto Grip, and we're going to do them, uh, and we're going to move on to all the other brands as well. So this is what I have for you. That is all I have for you today. Just wanted to make sure to jump on so you guys could see this. I'm going to try to do this with every brand. So make sure to like, follow, subscribe, uh, share this video around so people can see the Storm brands and how I think about the bowling balls that are in their line right now. So uh, until next time, guys, I'm getting out of here. We will see you guys later.